Hi, welcome back. Now we're going to factor quadratic expressions where the leading coefficient is 1. Okay, so we have a trinomial. Front runner here is 1. Now, in order to do this, I want to review the FOIL method. Again, I don't really care about the FOIL method in, as far as multiplying goes, because all of those are multiplied the same. But that pattern really helps us when we go backwards and factor. So let's take a look. Suppose we have the binomial x plus 3 times the binomial x plus 12. Well, first we multiply the first terms, x to the x, and we get x squared. Hence the f first terms. Then the x gets multiplied by the 12. Those are considered the outside or outer terms. That gives us a 12x, o for the outside. Now we have to distribute the 3. The 3 goes to the x. These are considered the inside terms and gives us a 3x, i for inside. And finally, the 3 gets multiplied by the 12. Those are the last terms in each binomial to give us a 36. F-O-I-L, first, outside, inside, and last. Notice the pattern. These two middle terms combine and we get 12x plus 3x, which is 15x. So here's our trinomial. The x squared here is a result of multiplying the first terms. The 36 here, the last, we got from multiplying the last. So the first in our trinomial, we got from multiplying the firsts. The last in our trinomial, we got from multiplying the lasts. The middle is from combining the outside and the inside terms that we got. One thing I want you to notice in our result, this last number here is 36. We got that when we multiplied 3 and 12. The middle number here of 15, we got from adding those numbers, 3 and 12. So that's the pattern that we're looking for. We're going to start here and go backwards. We are going to look for two items that will multiply and give us this first term, x and x. We're going to look for two numbers that multiply and give us 36. Well, there's a lot of numbers that multiply and give us 36, not just 3 and 12. We got 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 6 and 6, a whole lot of different combinations. We need to find the pair that will also add to 15. That's where the pattern comes in handy. So let's take a look here. x squared plus 15x plus 36. The first terms multiply to give us x squared. That's where the x times x comes in. The last terms multiply to give us 36, but add to give us 15. So we're going to look for factors of the last number that add to the middle number. Now, some of you may have learned um, what's called like the diamond method, where you draw like a big X and you write 36 on top and the 15 on bottom, and then you try different pairs of numbers to see which ones work. Some of you rock at that, and that's awesome. Me. Oftentimes, the pair that I need is the one pair <laughs> I don't think of. Um, so what I do is I take this 36 and I list all of the factors, but I list them methodically. I start with 1, 1 times 36, then 2, 2 times 36, 3 times 12, 4 times 9. 5 is not a factor of 36. Notice 36 does not end in 5 or 0. And then 6 times 6. And then once you start to repeat, you know you're done. But this way I know I have every single factor. I've gone down the list. Then I look for the pair that adds to the 15, the 3 and the 12. 3 plus 12 also gives us 15. So they multiply to give us 36 and they add to give us 15. So if you can't find it, like I said, the other methods are perfect, but if you can't find it, go ahead and list them and it might help. So these are the two factors we're going to use in here, x plus 3, x plus 12. And remember, you can always multiply these out to just double check that it does in fact equal your original trinomial. So here's another example. It's a trinomial. There's no GCF. Your first coefficient is 1. So that means I can go straight to the x times x, which gives us the x squared. Now I want to find factors of negative 70 that add to a negative 9. Now the 70 is negative, which means one of our factors has to be negative. Only a negative times a positive is going to give you a negative number. So I just start with the left-hand side always being negative. Negative 1 times 70, negative 2 times 35. 3 does not divide in there, 4 does not go in there. 
we have negative 5 times 14 and negative 7 times 10. 8 doesn't go in there, 9 doesn't divide in there, and then we start to repeat. Well, you may notice if we look at negative, oh, yeah, watch your signs. If we look at negative 5 times 14, well, they add to give us a positive 9. But remember, we want a negative 9 because it's a minus 9x here, so we want a negative 9. If you end up with the right number but the wrong sign, change your signs. So instead of negative 5 and a positive 14, we're going to change our signs to a positive 5 and a negative 14. So that gives us the negative 9. And these are the two numbers we're going to use here in our factors. So we have a positive 5, so plus 5, and a minus 14. So just something to think about as far as the signs go, because oftentimes it's either your multiplication tables or it's your sign rules that will hold you back. So if your last number is positive, you're going to have the same signs. For example, here, if you've got a positive 6 adding to a positive 5, then I'm going to use a positive 2 and a positive 3, because positive 2 times positive 3 gives me a positive 6, and it also adds to 5. But if I had the exact same problem, notice it has to multiply to give me a positive 6, but it has to add to give me a negative 5. So it's not just a positive times a positive that gives you a positive, but negative times a negative also gives you a positive. So this guy here will help you determine what those signs need to be. So we're going to use a negative 2 and a negative 3 here. So if your last number is positive, you have to have a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative. So the signs are going to be the same. Likewise, if your last number is negative, you have to have different signs because only a positive times a negative or negative times a positive is going to give you a negative product. So x squared plus 5x minus 6, we're going to use a positive 6 and a negative 1. They multiply to give me a negative 6, but they add to give me a positive 5. Versus x squared minus 5x minus 6, well, they multiply to give me a negative, so I know my signs are different but they have to add to a negative 5 this time, so I'm going to use a negative 6 and a positive 1. So remember, your sign tools are really important here. Now, what if there is a GCF? No problem. Remember, we have to look for that first. So here, there's not a variable in common, because this last number doesn't have a variable, but all of the coefficients are divisible by 8. So we have a GCF of 8. But this is what a lot of students want to do. They want to take out the 8 and go straight to the two binomials. This is too hard. I have trouble doing this, okay? Believe me, after 3 o'clock, my brain is toast. I can't think. So if you're taking an afternoon class and you're like me, this is definitely too tough. But oftentimes, it just, it's not intuitive. You know this is what you're supposed, your result is supposed to look like, but there's a middle step that you're missing. So first, always factor out the GCF to see what is left. So remember, the distributive property backwards. So you want to see here's the 8 and then what you have left over after you divide out that 8. Now, factor this trinomial that's in parentheses. Your 8's still going to be there, but you want to determine what are the two binomials you get from the trinomial inside the parentheses. So now your first coefficient is 1 of that y squared. So y times y would give you the y squared. And we want factors of a positive 3, so our signs are the same, that add to a negative 4. So both signs are going to be negative. So negative 1 and a negative 3. If you wrote negative 3 first and negative 1 second, that's fine. The order doesn't matter. Now you try. Here are three different examples. I want you to go ahead and pause the video and then try them. Once you're done and you want to see how you did, hit play and we'll go over them together. So we are now one step closer to mastering all the factoring techniques. This one, we've got a trinomial where your first coefficient is 1. So we can go straight to y times y. Because remember, the first terms will multiply to give you the y squared. Now we need to figure out what these last two guys are going to be. They have to multiply and give us the last guy there. So what choices do we have for 24? 
Well, we have 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6, 5 doesn't go, and then once you hit 6, you start to repeat again. So now we're looking for the factor pairs that would also add ah, to a negative 24. Well, the problem here is I've written all of these down as positives. Well, po two positives multiply to give me a positive number, but they're not going to add to give me a negative. So what must both of these signs be? Negative. So negative times a negative, negative times a negative, negative times a negative, negative times a negative. Now which pair add up to 14? Good. The negative 2 and negative 12, because negative 2 plus a negative 12 also gives you a negative 14. Negative 2, negative 12. So that's the pair that we want. And you can always double check. The outside multiplies and gives you a negative 12y. Inside multiplies to gives you a negative 2y. So when you combine the outside and inside, we will get the negative 14y. So our result, we'll write it a little neat, neater, y minus 2 times y minus 12. All right, let's take a look at the second one. 3x squared plus 3x minus 36. Ah, notice we have a GCF here of a 3. So if we factor out the 3 first, we would be left with x squared plus x minus 12. Now we can go and factor into the two binomials. x times x, factors of negative 12. One of them has to be negative, so we've got negative 1 times 12, negative 2 times 6, negative 3 times 4, um, and then negative 4, and we start to repeat. So of these pairs, the negative 3 and 4 would add to this middle term of positive one, because negative three plus four, Ooh, that's a little nice little extra piece there. Negative three plus four would give us one. So there's our result, completely factored. Last but not least, C, we have x squared plus seven x plus six. We can go to x times x, and we want factors of a positive 6 that add to a positive 7. So 1 plus 6 and 2, plus, uh, 2 times 3. So 1 plus 6 works. Plus 1 and plus 6. Double check, see how you did. So how did you do? Factoring can be fun, but it can also be frustrating. So be sure that you take your time and practice. So a few things to remember, GCF is always the first step to factoring. And this x times x method, where factors of the last add to the middle, only works when your first coefficient, your leading coefficient, is 1. In other words, you do not see a number in front of the x squared. Thanks for watching, and if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to watch the video again. Go look for other videos. Believe me, I won't be offended. There's some great resources out there. Also, ask your teacher, ask your tutor, ask your friends. Don't let your pride keep you from passing. So hopefully we'll see you again soon.